Hey, Law Winners, it's Law Y86 here with another video, uh, doing something a little bit different here because this is kind of breaking. Yep. We wouldn't normally do this. I'd put together a proper video or we'd do it on our live show on the podcast, but today is a very special one because of something, some discrepancies, massive ones really, that we found in mainstream media coverage of this chained woman case. Correct. So I'm gonna bring uh, Serpent ZA here, of course, business partner, colleague, friend. Uh, we got these leaked documents, we got, we got notes. notes. We got all kinds of good stuff to cover here. Um, just to kind of blow the lid off of this case, which I'm getting very, I think both of us are getting very frustrated with the way that it's being covered because it's almost like normal media outlets are actually taking Chinese uh, Communist Party narrative at face value. Correct. And it's something that we, we deal with all the time. The hypocrisy and lies is just absolutely outlandish. Yeah. So, um, first of all, I want to introduce the chained woman yeah i think that's probably how we should do it we're going to um law 86 here is going to tell you who she is how this came about and then i'm going to tell you the story the official story that the chinese government has put out from day one about this woman and then we're going to delve into how it's all bullshit really yes so okay let's uh let's bring this up for you and then you take the lead so the guy you see behind us right now his name on the online he has like an online handle called bagaba uh, Bahai Ba, sorry. Bahai Ba means like eight child father. And he became super famous online, just to catch you guys up, because he is raising eight children by himself. Now in China, there's a massive double standard. If you're a woman raising eight children, they'd call you a pig. But in China, because it's a man doing it, he's a hero. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, how he's he's so kind. What a what a beautiful man to, to raise eight children by himself. He's so how to say sing cool in, in English, you'd say like, oh, he suffers so much to do this, right? So he became famous on Douyin, which is Chinese TikTok. But the thing is, because of his fame, people were going to visit him in his little village. Now his village is actually in the richest province of China, right? Yeah, um, in fact, if you saw in the background, you can see um, this whole pile of clothing and stuff, that's what fans had donated to him. Because they're like, this poor guy has to raise these eight children by himself. Let's donate clothing for them, etc. So he's got this entire big attic. And what you're seeing here is a fan who went to go there to also deliver more goods and to help, you know. And while they were looking around, they found something in the backyard. It's not something you would normally find in someone's backyard either. So when they were going around, they found a woman that was chained up inside of this shack. Not something you wanna see. I mean, this is some modern modern day, like uh, horror movie, real life stuff. No one expected this either. There weren't like inklings of this online. They, they just found it when they were there. It's almost like the guy and the people there acted like it was something normal. And there there is something to that because in China, family affairs are considered family affairs and authorities rarely get involved. I was in China for 10 years, Winston was in 14 years. We saw so many situations where people can't get involved or police won't even get involved in domestic abuse cases because, not just human trafficking, domestic abuse, because that's a family affair. You don't get involved with that. It's considered like uh, almost immoral to question people on their family affairs, right? So long story short, they find this woman chained up. She's eating uh, cold porridge. Her teeth are missing. She's got a lock around her neck. And with a lot of digging, a lot of um, you know trying to figure this out, people figure or surmise that she was the mother of these eight children for this guy that's famous. Now, I'm gonna skip a lot of details. What I want you guys to understand is that when this was speculated, the Chinese government said, oh geez, well, we've already kind of congratulated him that he's like this amazing father, he's got eight kids. He started getting brand deals. He worked with a, a wedding photography company, just all these local businesses who put him in the spotlight because he was so famous. And the Chinese government doubled down and said, no, 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 this is, this is not like a human trafficking case. We're gonna actually renovate his house. So they paid for his house to be renovated. And the people online are not stupid in China. They freaked out. They said, because this is a personal case, they know that human trafficking is real. We have a lot of personal stories we'll get into later, but human trafficking is real and it's touched a lot of people in China. So for them, they wanted to find out more. And this is exactly like when I uncovered the origins of the coronavirus in the, from the Wuhan lab. It was quite obvious, like there was enough information. The Chinese netizens led me there. They compiled it all, but then it started to get wiped away. And this is where we start chipping away at this story. So the official narrative is this. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna read you what happened. So, of course, there was a lot of outrage when people watched this video and saw this woman chained. She's got a padlock around her neck. 
She's in terrible conditions. You must understand it's freezing cold weather and she's chained in this outdoor shed, which doesn't have a door. Okay. And they were like, what's going on? So the the official government release, they released three official reports. Okay. And obviously a few days apart. The first one was that there's no human trafficking going on and that it's a normal marriage and that she married that guy and everything's above board and everything's fine. Of course, they didn't focus on the fact that she's chained to a wall. That's all fine. They did start to raise questions about why she has eight children, though, because, you know, in China, there was a one child policy until recently and you're not supposed to. So they were like, yeah, it looks like the local family planning guys, they didn't do their job properly. We're going to punish them. But they didn't even mention the, the chain or the terrible conditions she's living in or anything like that. So that was their first official report is that it's normal. Of course, then they get a lot of pushback from the netizens. They're like, it's not normal for somebody to be abused and chained up and missing teeth and stuff and all that. So then the second one was, <clears throat> oh, no, the, the official story now is that the ba Baha'i Ba, this, this guy, the husband, we can call him the rape husband, I guess, the terrible guy who just, you know, abused her and locked her up. Trafficking yeah, that guy. No, the official story is that that guy's father found this woman begging. Um, you know, nearby, like on the border of uh, uh, of the province there, and took her home like a lost dog. And local officials had made a mistake about her identity. So now the, the next, this is official government um, statement, is that this guy's father just found her begging and then took her home. Okay? Again, people are like, what the hell, man? Like, what's going on? So then the third official report is, oh, no, because, look, huge amounts of speculation started to come up. And in fact, uh, we'll show you in the background here, um, people were, were starting to dig through missing persons reports and they found this particular woman who everybody thinks it's her. I just want to uh, mention something real quick. Um, yeah. Sorry. Um, this is a huge problem in China. Human trafficking is so bad. And I just wanted to bring up the fact that the park I live next to where I was had five children kidnapped in a very short span of time, was never covered by the media, mm -hmm. right? And it was something that you had to talk to the other parents about. And they taught me how it actually happens. They'll get a mian bao chu, which is like a bread car. Which it's just like a nondescript van. They'll pull up and the gang of beggars will take some children and send them out into the park that have already been brainwashed and kidnapped. And they'll actually get those children to come go play with children that are already kind of, their parents are distracted. They're not paying attention to them and lure them closer and closer to the van until they kidnap them. Now, why this is important is this has set up a huge network of uh, websites, um, um, which actually stemmed from this one called, um, what was it, Baba Zainar? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Baba Bei Baba, Baba Bei Huija, um, like baby come home. Yeah. And it's all of these thousands and thousands of parents around China that are trying to find their kids. So they post their kid's photo, you know, where they've been seen, where they've been human trafficked to potentially, and they try to find this. And this is the thing is this girl, yeah. she came up and she looks exactly yeah. like the woman. Yeah, her name is Li Ying from Sichuan, okay? And everybody's saying, look, it must be her. She was kidnapped when she was 12 and around about the same time that this guy, you know, married her officially, which was 1998 is the official time that she, she got married. She disappeared in 97, I think, or 90, yeah, 96, yeah, okay. 97. Anyway, the fact of the matter is everyone's saying that it's this woman. Um, and I think most of us, if we looked at the pictures, would agree that there's a striking resemblance between the two and that it most probably is her. But then there was um, another woman that kept coming up that they were saying, uh, let me just uh, look at my notes here. <clears throat> so... Other people were saying that it's because they dug up like her old marriage certificate and on the marriage certificate said that she came from a, a, a village in Yunnan. OK, and there was a missing woman from Yunnan and her name is Xiao Hua Mei. OK, so people were saying, OK, it's probably the Xiao Hua Mei. The, the local government, after a lot of pressure, said, OK, we'll go investigate. OK, so they went to Yunnan and they interviewed people, showed a photo around and, and all that kind of nonsense. They took DNA from their database. They didn't take DNA from the woman, strangely enough, and we'll get into that. But they took DNA from their database of the Xiao Hua Mei that they had on file. And then they compared it to people in uh, Yunnan. And they officially declared that it is actually this, this woman from Yunnan. Okay. Yeah. Which let me... Um, not this one. That, that's that's someone else. Okay. So at the end... Okay. Give us a second. We'll... Uh, We'll get to it. So I'll show you the uh, uh, there, this one. Yeah. Okay. So you see, see the one on the left there. Yeah. This this black and white photo. That's the missing woman from 
uh, from Yunnan, which I think we can all agree doesn't look anything like the um, the actual chain, not, chained woman. Not to mention that ages don't match up whatsoever. Yeah. So this is the, you, what you're telling me is that the government response is saying that these two women are the same. Okay. Now, what one thing you have to realize, guys, is that this this woman, the black and white woman, is a real person. Okay, a real person called Xiao Hua Mei that did disappear from Yunnan. And I'm going to tell you her little story. Okay, and then we're going to get into it. And this is the story. This is the, the official. These are the official announcements from the police and from the local government that they've tracked it. They've DNA tested. It's definitely this woman over here, Xiao Hua Mei. And they're saying, <clears throat> okay, she was from Yunnan. Okay, and she was human trafficked. Mm -hmm. And what happened was that a human trafficker took her to Jiangsu to get treatment and find a good husband. But this human trafficker said that she just simply, when she arrived at the train station, Xiao Hua Mei disappeared. She lost her. Okay? That was her official statement to the police. Of course, they dug deeper and stuff. And after the netizens are like, look, that's not good enough, finally they made her confess. So the Xiao Hua Mei woman was born in 1977, got married in 1995, but then she divorced in 1997, and she moved back to her village in Yunnan. Okay, a year later, the human trafficker with the surname Sung bought her from Yagu, uh, which is the, the village in Yunnan that she's originally from, all the way to Jiangsu province, which is far. It's 2,000 miles away, okay? Oh, sorry, 2,000 kilometers away, okay? Um, and the whole guise was that she's going to take her to get medical treatment because apparently she had a mental disorder of, you know, a mild mental disorder is what they're saying. I'm going to take you for treatment and I'm going to find you a good husband. But what she did was when she got to Jiangsu province, she sold her for 5,000 yuan, which is about 790 US dollars. She sold this black and white woman here. She sold her to a man, uh, you know, obviously for to be a bride or something. But you think it's uh, you think that's the end of the story? No. OK, because um, that, by the way, the woman who took her there later, her and her husband both got arrested for human trafficking for selling children. They were selling children, and uh, one of them was sentenced for five years. The other one was sentenced for seven years, because apparently it's okay to sell children. You'll only get a five-year sentence. It's okay. Anyway, oh, here's where it gets interesting, okay? She disappeared after a couple of months being with the man she was sold to. She obviously ran away. And then a couple who ran a hotel found her begging and took her in. That couple then, after a month, sold her to a construction foreman, okay? So this couple who took her and sold her to a construction guy who was working next to the hotel. The construction guy then sold her to a man in Feng County, which is, you know, this area where the chain woman was found. Then the man in Feng County sold her to the father of eight guy. So she got sold four times within a period of a couple months there. It's absolutely disgusting. Now, this is the official official from the government. This is... This is their, they, they're saying, oh, it's okay. We figured it out. Don't worry. She was just, you know, she was sold by a human trafficker to a guy. Then he sold it. Uh, then she escaped. She became a beggar. She got taken in, then sold to a construction worker. And construction worker sold her to another guy. And then that guy sold it to this guy. So it's kind of okay. And guess what, guys? I'm going to ask you out there. What do you think the law, what do you think the punishment is for buying a woman in China? I mean, if you were to guess, what would you think a good punishment would be? I mean, a, a good punishment would be, I don't know, 25 years to life. Yeah. Well, OK. Up until 1997, there was no punishment. If you bought a woman, no problem. Not your fault. They do punish the seller. But as you can see, not much. In, two, in the year 2000, the, the, that couple, they only got five and seven years respectively for selling children. OK, so it's not a lot. Yeah. But... If you were to buy a woman in China, there are no repercussions, okay? But then they changed the law uh, in 1997 to say that if you buy a woman and you don't abuse her, then there are no repercussions. But if you buy a woman and you abuse her, then you can get up to three years imprisonment, okay? And I mean abuse as in, you know, like just yeah. terribly, terribly abuse her. Um, then in 2015, they changed the law that if you buy a woman, if you don't abuse her, you'll get off lightly, a small sentence. But if you buy her and abuse her, you get three years. But it's a maximum of three years. Literally, you can go to China, buy a rural woman from someone. If you get caught abusing, just absolutely doing terrible things to her, you get three years. That's China, man.
That's China. So I want you to go to the marriage documents here. Yeah, let's go to the marriage documents. Should be, yeah, right there. So these are the marriage documents. So what, just to really make this simple for yeah. everyone, what the Chinese government would like you to believe is that this woman on the marriage document is the same as the chained woman, right? Zhao Hua Mei. And they said that they've proven this with DNA testing. Now, I don't know about you, those people look absolutely nothing alike. Their face structure, their eyes, their nose, and the dates don't even match up because the woman that's chained up is clearly much younger than this woman who is speculated to have been born in 1977, right? So the netizens are not stupid. They're not, they're not dumb, right? Pull up the composite. The original girl, the 12 year old that was, was, no, that's, oh, that's way later. Yeah. The, yeah, here we go. Yeah. No, this one, yeah. Mm -hmm. The 12 year old girl that was lost from the, the Sichuan province, there's a lot of speculation as to why that conversation was completely kiboshed. And some of that speculation is that potentially, and this is allegedly, mm -hmm. is that her parents have affiliation with the People's Liberation Army. And if, a People's Liberation Army child was abducted, that or a veteran, sorry, would be absolutely outlandish amongst the veteran community in China who would start pointing fingers at the central government because they have ties to that. So this, this the, that's the uh, allegation right now, but netizens, almost every netizen out there is convinced that this is the same girl. It's the same facial structures, everything lines up, this, keep in mind, this girl was only 12 when she was missing. So this video, or this photo is only when she was 12 years old. Obviously, she went through some changes, but has so much more in common than this, uh, this crazy uh, wedding document that they're saying is proof of this, right? Now, what I want to get into is why this actually happened. Winston was pointing out the official narrative, which I'm very disappointed is becoming the official narrative of Western news outlets as well. And again, we're just looking at something where you, you could only have, you could only know if you've had experience living in China, the amount of human trafficking that goes on, the reason why they would want to cover it up, and the actual punishment that gets divvied out to, to the people uh, that are culpable for the crime. The reason this is happening is because human trafficking is such an issue, and it's such an issue that people actually care about in China, unlike like, oh, some, uh, you know, maybe some, someone got hit by a train or, oh, this building fell down because of poor construction. That doesn't affect the average person. They're like, oh, my building's probably fine. But when it's a personal issue about someone's family members, and then maybe through the grapevine, maybe only two or, or two or three degrees down, they know someone that lost a family member. This becomes super, super close to home for people. I mean, it was close to home for me, quite literally. There are people all around that have dealt with this, and everyone knows someone that has been a victim or at least someone, someone that has been a victim of human trafficking. So that's why it's an issue. Number two, when they ask too many questions, then people start to freak out and they start to say, wait a minute, what's the local government doing about this? Nothing. And they start asking questions, which eventually leads to asking questions about the central government. Well, if the local government is responsible for this, why didn't the central government do anything about this? And this is what leads me to something very important. There were some documents leaked. And again, this is alleged, but... There were some documents leaked on the Chinese internet about the process of dealing with the, uh, not only the interrogation, but the investigation in this village for the chained woman. And I just want you to tell everyone what the allegation of what they did first with the barricades. Yeah, apparently they put up barricades to stop people coming in to, you know, actually try and investigate. Because citizen journalists have been the only true voice in this whole situation. If it was up to the government, that first official announcement, oh, it's an, it's an official marriage, there's no human trafficking, it's all okay, that would have been it. But citizen journalists have tried very hard to push this issue. In fact, two women who went there to try and do their own investigation got detained by the police. You know, just ordinary citizens who try to go and find out yeah. more. They've been trying their best to, to quash any rumors about this, trying to stop anything about it. But you have to understand that they would have gotten away with it if it hadn't been for the massive amount of outrage across the Chinese uh, internet mm -hmm. and internationally. So it's important to cover what these alleged leaked documents say. Mm -hmm. So if you think, well, what the Chinese government is trying to do is say, we're being so transparent, we made the necessary arrests, we punished the officials, blah, blah, blah. If that's the case, then why did this document come out? Number one, 
Interrogate the people who potentially leaked the photo on the internet. It wasn't, let's try to get to the bottom of this. The first response on this list of actions for officials was to interrogate the people who leaked the photo of the chained woman online. Yeah. Number two, track all vehicles visiting the village. So, you know, China's a surveillance network country. It's got millions, if not a billion cameras all over the place. Um, and they know they have access to a lot of footage and data and stuff like this. Number three, track all people who visited the villagers. So again, we're three levels deep in this document here. They wanted people not to look into it and try to figure out who trafficked this woman who abused her and forced her to give birth to eight people and chain her to a wall. No, the priority was to figure out who talked about it. Number four, to warn all college students and government employees if that they talk about the case, they will be expelled or fired. Mm -hmm. Rep repercussions for talking about the truth or even asking questions. Number five, inform all the families that any video or photo leaked to the internet will be punished. Does this remind you of anything? Do you remember in the beginning of the, of the COVID pandemic when they said that it would, you would be punished? on national news, if you talked about the Wuhan uh, leak yeah. or talked about the, the of COVID-19 in general, because it's just a rumor and it's not real. That's what they said. I remember. Number six, organizing people to redirect the public attention and direction of discussion away from blaming the party. Now, what happens in China is when there's something that they don't want to be talked about, not only do they censor it, but they hire people called Wu Mao in China to go online and start steering people away from the conversation. They might, I actually saw it happening in the live chat here during this video saying, oh, it's already been taken care of. Oh no, that's not true. They try to make it sound like it's not credible anymore. So people say, oh, okay, well, there's no reason to talk about this. They've already figured it out. Seven, all related government departments prepare a reasonable explanation regarding the issue. Again, what Winston was reading there was this kind of collaborative effort to make the problem go away, not to actually get to the bottom of it. I got to also add that as of last night, and the reason why we're, we're uh, releasing this now is probably something about 10 hours ago, news was released that they have finally decided to arrest the husband for abuse and you know kidnapping and those kind of charges. But it's all linking back to the Yunnan woman. Uh, that's that's what they're basing it on. They've also gone and arrested the people who trafficked her originally, the, the, the couple that was, you know, arrested in 2000 as well because of the arresting, I mean, uh, trafficking children. They've arrested them. They've also gone to arrest the man that they sold her to. They've also gone to, uh, you know, arrest others down the chain, basically. So what they're doing is the, the police and the government are showing, look, we've taken action now, and now we're actually going to hold the people responsible who trafficked the, the Yunnan women. And it's their way of trying to say, okay, we finally did something, shut up and leave it alone. You know, that's, they put that out. So that's the breaking news is that they have finally, officially arrested the parties involved. And that actually goes perfectly with number eight. It says, control Dong's family. So the guy that, that chained her up, right? Mm -hmm. Control his family and prevent information leakage again. And this is straight up vibes of the initial pandemic outbreak. This is how China works. You will never find anyone responsible because, and this is the most damning piece that you can walk away from this. The people responsible for this kind of stuff are the, are the officials. They're the government officials. Of course they can't take the blame. So when they point fingers at people like in the Wuhan thing, oh, the Wuhan officials, it's their fault. The central government is the one that told people not to give any bad news. So when there's bad news given, people get punished. So you get punished if you give good news or bad news in this situation. No one is ever held responsible. The Chinese government is terrified of a situation where they find out that the officials are the ones that are actually promoting the tra human trafficking because it's a massive revenue source, right? And I want to tell you guys, Winston and I have met human traffickers. I met human traffickers on the border of Vietnam and China. And on the Chinese side, it was the People's Liberation Army, the actual soldiers that told me and bragged to me and showed me the boats going across the river, human trafficking, and had absolutely no issue with it. In fact, they had radios on them that were controlling the whole situation. And this is how deep it goes. And that's how nasty this actually is. You'll never see this kind of case actually come to uh, a conclusion because look at Peng Shui. She was forced to retire. 
right? They make a problem go away and they make it so uncomfortable for someone's family until there's never any truth to be found. And you will never see a situation where anyone is ever held accountable in China for this kind of thing until the government changes. Yeah. You know, this, we got to make this clear for you. What the government has tried to do here is tie this up with a neat little bow and say, done, now move on. We don't want to hear about this anymore. But actually, this has opened up a lot more questions and it's taken a much darker path. Look, I lived with a girl who'd been trafficked. I, I, talked about it in my video about how Chinese prostitution works, if you're interested in that. And she was sold into prostitution and stuff. It's it's a real thing in China. It's a massive... All Chinese people will admit that there's a huge kidnapping and human trafficking problem in China. Of course, they don't like to let the world know about it, you know, because it's embarrassing and it's a, you know, it's a terrible situation. But here's the thing. They've tied up a bow to say, yes, okay, DNA says it's this woman from Yunnan. We've tracked the people who trafficked her and sold her four times. We've arrested them now. We've arrested the father now finally for abuse because I don't know why it took so long for them to realize that chaining somebody to a wall. Apparently, she's been chained to that wall since 2017, by the way. Okay. And she's been a captive and abused and obviously raped. And she had eight children uh, for 24 years or whatever the case. It's a terrible situation. But what they're trying to say is, yes, it was the woman from Yunnan. Yes, it's done. But... Come on, guys. When we look at the comparisons here, it's not the same woman. If you look at the eyes, they're far too wide apart. They're a different shape. The mouth, the, the lips, the nose, everything doesn't match up. And again, this is the government wants you to believe that this is the same person. Yes. Now, here's the thing. What happened to the actual person from Yunnan? Because it's clearly not her. So where did she go? Because she's the one who appears in that fake, by the way, the marriage certificate, that guy, he got fake ID documents made for her. He changed her name, all this kind of stuff. Okay, so that's that was another thing. There's a lot of names floating around, a lot of fake birth dates. And, you know, because on the marriage certificate, it says that this, uh, the black and white woman um, was born in 1968. And so people were saying like, what? The, that doesn't make sense for the age of this woman. Definitely wasn't born in 1968, the, the chained one. And then they're like, oh, they explained that away by saying that he just arbitrarily changed her the date of birth that kind of nonsense, always trying to explain away this garbage. But the fact of the matter is, it gets pretty dark, guys. If you if you look and search about like dead bodies turning up in that particular area of China, in yeah, in 2011, you find a lot of cases of women floating in the rivers, dead bodies just being discovered. In that tiny area. Yeah, it's it's in one tiny little area, and here yeah. we've got. Well, yeah, that area, when, when we say tiny, you know, China's huge. Um, there are so many different cases of unknown dead bodies of women being found in the rivers, sorry, which is just appalling. So who's to say that one of those is not the original woman and that he just went and bought himself another one? You know what I mean? I mean, if you really, this is, this is where we, we can be different than like journalists. Yeah. There's no way to prove this because you're never going to get transparency in China. But what we can say is it, it all points to this, guys. It's quite clear. I mean, the netizens have already, Chinese netizens have already done the legwork. Yeah. It's quite clear what happened here. Yeah. And the, the right people aren't going to, they're going to go unpunished. You know, the people at the top that actually allowed this to happen. Sure. You won't see anything more about this. It's so simple. And the fact that they haven't allowed, you know, the pe people that thought that this could be their lost daughter, they haven't allowed them to meet. They haven't gone and just, okay, let's take a blood sample and let's take a blood sample and let's do it. It's always like, oh, we're going to go find an old piece of cloth from the Yunnan's deceased. Parent. That's very convenient for them because the, the woman from Yunnan is an orphan now. Her parents died a long time ago, right? So the fact of the matter is there's no like real living relative. There's a half sister, you know, and that kind of thing. So it's easy for them to just sweep it under the rug and say, it's that woman from Yunnan. But... Look at the comparison here. This the, this is the original speculation. Yeah, the, this person, um, uh, Li Ying, yeah. is definitely, at least in my mind, the real person. Of, here. of course it is. You know, of everybody's saying is. that. Not this black and white woman who's tragically disappeared and was trafficked. She was the one that got sold four times. All right. Okay. But, you know, she probably died or got disposed of being, you know, left out in the cold or whatever the case. Who knows what happened? And then he just went and bought another wife perhaps the most insipid thing about this is actually how this isn't that big of a deal in china yeah this is only made news because finally someone discovered it and got it on camera yeah. the amount of cases where this isn't documented properly are in the thousands yeah. right it's insane it's absolutely insane 
So I really just wanted to sum this up by saying this is a perfect example of a situation where netizens go out there and care about something and get shut down and the first response by the government is to sh is to hush it up and not to actually find out what, what, what went wrong at all. You have to push them so hard to actually even come up with a bullshit excuse because the first thing that they do is try to cover it up with actual actual dirt sometimes and completely wipe the internet of any conversation and punish anybody that does. So the next time you wonder why Chinese people don't speak out, it's because they can't, yeah. right? I also have to remind everybody, probably something that supersedes all of this is the fact that you can buy women in China and not get punished. And if you do get punished, it's such a small amount. Whereas if you buy an airsoft replica gun, you can get life in jail. In fact, people have gone. Yeah, they have. Prison for if you buy um, certain types of plants, you know, you can get seven years in jail if you buy a, a, an, an illegal plant. If you not buy, like drugs, we're talking about an illegal plant. No, like plant just a that's plant that's like there, an yeah. invasive species or right. something. If you buy endangered animal parts, you can get life in prison or the death penalty. But if you buy an actual human being, a woman, you can get a maximum of three years in jail. Now you have to understand that this is a country that's trying to be a superpower. This is a country that's trying to go out there and have the Olympics and, and all this. This is a country that Eileen Gu is going there to say, I'm going to go represent. Is a country that obviously really is very far behind when it comes to women's rights and looking after women and just human rights in general. China, the Chinese government has created an absolutely sick sick and ill situation that will never be dealt with because the first priority, like I said, is to cover everything up. So I wanna thank you guys uh, for being out there and I want to push you guys over to something very special and very important. Uh, Winston, can you go to the end here? Uh, Winston and I, you guys have been asking us over and over and over again, everyone else is doing daily content. Why can't you guys do daily content? So we created China Fact Chasers. It is a daily uh, content that comes from both of us about current events based out of China. So the same kind of videos we'll be making on our channels is nothing new, like Lao 86 Serpents Today will be the same, well-documented, well-thought-out, well-produced videos about a topic that we research over time. But China Fact Chasers will be for your current events, your quick stuff, the stuff that you need to know right now that's coming out of China. So yeah. the link is down below right now in the description. And we want you guys to go subscribe because we like to develop the channel. We gotta get it monetized, we gotta get it out there. Um, so we'd really appreciate you guys subbing. So basically, you will get daily content, uh, you know, th topics that we talk about on our podcast, and mm -hmm. you're going to see them come up every day. Please go subscribe. We have 12 subscribers right now. Yeah. So we'd like to see that number grow a little bit. Um, honestly, guys, we really, really um, thank you for your support. Yes. And, you know, we need to be able to talk about these important topics, and we're so glad that you're here to listen, because the only way these things are ever going to change is through dialogue. Yeah. So uh, please go subscribe to that. And I'm going to do some super chats, but first I'll sign up. Sign, but first I'll sign off. <laughs> You're going to sign up? Wait, let them go sign up go to China sign Fact Chasers. Go sign up to China Fact Chasers. I'm going to open then, it up. I'm going to okay, see, see how many subscribers we That's get. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah, links in the description, um, right? Yes. Go for it. And uh, I'm going to do some super chats now. But first, for the people that didn't tune in live, thank you so much, Law Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one. And don't forget to join us on our podcast on yeah. Friday as well. Absolutely. Link down yeah. below. Okay.